Three months before COVID-19 stopped the world, I broke up with my boyfriend. It was just before Thanksgiving. A silly argument turned a serious corner at whiplash speed and he said he wasn't interested in love. Taken aback, I uttered something that amounted to, don't let the doorknob hit you on the way out. My dating profiles were on pause during a relationship, so I decided to start again in earnest after the holidays. 2020 began in a rush. I'd only just started swiping through my online dating accounts when the COVID-19 lockdowns hit. A shameless introvert, happy for the excuse to wear sweatpants all day, order groceries online, and go on a wine-fueled reading binge, I shut everything down again. But after five COVID months, I'd reached my limit of awkward Zoom party, uh, Zoom cocktail parties. I say COVID months because those should be measured like dog years, not regular months. My friend said it was pointless to date. We're in lockdown. But home alone without even a quarantine hostage pet, I was dying to talk to new people. At worst, I thought I might end up with some funny stories. Online dating anecdotes are hilarious. Just ask all of my married friends. At best, I thought I'd get to meet somebody without the stress of, do I kiss him on the first date? Do I invite him inside on the third date? But it's a pandemic. What better time to get to know someone in a chaste but flirty Jane Austen style romance? And maybe, if he was witty and smart and didn't believe that masks were a sign of tyranny, maybe I could find a bona fide COVID boo to shack up with until the world writes itself again. Early on, I was approached by a guy who said he wanted to be obedience trained. Swipe left. Another guy sent me a message asking where I'd taken one of my travel photos. Before I responded, I read his profile he firmly believed in sex positivity and was looking for a confident woman to occasionally discipline him with corporal punishment. And no, he did not need a safe word. Next, someone said I was pretty and asked if I was interested in FLR. I asked if that was a band. He said, no, it stands for female led relationship. I sent him the head scratching emoji and he explained that he wanted me to dominate him. I was propositioned by more than a handful of men who identified as submissives looking for a dominant woman. I politely declined them all and took another look at my dating profile. I mean, what the hell? I read and reread looking for clues but didn't find them. I looked pleasant in photos, I thought. Me, on a colorful blanket in the grass on a bright sunny day for the socially distanced Pilates class that I teach on Saturdays. Me at the beach with a short but not too short jean skirt on. I'm wearing a jaunty scarf. Me at a museum ball in a black dress. Wait, 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 is this it? The dress is one shoulder, a slice removed at the waist, and a provocative slit up the leg. I thought I looked a little awkward attempting to smile with my eyes. But I am in dark lipstick. Well, that must be it. Okay, out with trying to become hither in the party dress, and in with me smiling bright against the mosaic wall of primary colors in La Jolla. I mean, no self-respecting dom is going to be in a photo with this many happy colors. The next guy I talked to did not mention wanting to be controlled, and that suited me just fine. I have enough to do with my own emotional self-control, thank you very much. So we arranged a chat, and all was going well. He said he was into literature and poetry. Nice. The pandemic was hitting him hard. Me too, buddy. He said he wasn't interested in a vanilla relationship. That sounded like a curious phrase to me, but I let it slide until he said it again. You know, who's got time for vanilla? Shit, is this racial? 
I flash back to the guy who messaged me unashamedly with the words, yummy chocolate cake. So, um, vanilla, was that his way of not saying chocolate? Uh, what do you mean by vanilla? He explained that, you know, he liked spice in the bedroom. I I'm gonna need more than that. Well, I enjoy swing, he said. Are we talking swing dancing? No. Okay. You realize there's a pandemic lockdown, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure the CDC does not recommend that kind of thing. He said that life was too short and he couldn't keep going on like this in quarantine without expressing his true desires. Well, alrighty then. My, look at the time. Then he asked if I'd heard of hot wifing. I said I had not. What I did not say is that I would be Googling that term immediately after I extricate myself from this call. He said hot wifing would involve his partner being sexually serviced by another person while he watched and she berated him because of his presumed inadequacy. He said some call it cuckolding. I had a million questions, but I figured I'd let Google answer all of them. Even if I was interested, it felt like way too soon to tell the girl you haven't met that you want to see her have sex with other people during a pandemic. I have a hard and fast rule anyway. Any guy that even mentions sex, cuddling, or great kisser in his profile is swipe left material because He's probably not interested in my Jane Austen plan. I looked at my profile again. I guess I'm going through a bad streak? I mean, dating, it's a numbers game, right? Okay, another guy, another phone date. We get through the whole first phone call and first Zoom date without talk of me dominating anyone. Streak is over. So I share a few funny stories from my Dom courting suitors. He's not laughing. I thought maybe my delivery was off. I mean, can you believe it took me this many years to hear the word cuckold? <laughs> Sounds like something out of Dickens. I know the term, he said. Well, you've clearly read more Dickens than me. He said, I'm also someone who identifies as a submissive and finding a dominant woman for a loving female-led relationship is very important to me. I had no idea how to say, not that there's anything wrong with that. After I pretty much just said that I thought there was something wrong with that. Before I could fake a bad internet connection and end the video feed, he explained that he wasn't offended much. He asked what I knew, what I didn't, and what I was curious about. Hmm. So, you're not into the lick my boots type dominatrix? Hmm. Teasing? That sounds cute. <laughs> Wait, what, what is orgasm control? And yes, to being tied up. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> you don't have to go into <clears throat> the details. He said that he included hints in his profile about his preferences. He said he used the word mischievous on purpose. It sounded innocuous to me at the time, but suddenly I thought that was definitely a red flag. If I'd read a profile with the word naughty or bad girl instead of mischievous, my spidey senses would have tangled. But I was so impressed by his use of complete sentences that I thought mischievous was an attempt at dry wit. And he did have a dry wit. He made me laugh. So we arranged to talk again and it went nicely. He's easy to talk to and well-informed about history and politics and world events. It felt very much like the forming of a friendship. 
he made me feel comfortable. So, um, there's something I need to ask. What am I missing in my profile that seems to attract guys that want to be dominated? He laughed and I worried that I had missed something super obvious and I was on some fetish website with the directive, message her for a good time. He said, that's the thing. I looked at your profile again and I couldn't find a hint that you might be a dominant. Your profile is very sweet, which doesn't mean that you couldn't be a dom, but I have a theory. You're tall. Excuse me? I mean, I'm five foot ten and bare feet, but I have never been a sub magnet before in my life. He wasn't done. I've noticed something on the dating apps and didn't put it together until you. There's a higher percentage of women in their 40s who are tall on the apps compared to tall 40 something women on average. Wait, what? A higher percentage of tall women in their 40s are single because small-minded, and by mind I mean dick, men can't handle the height differential? It drives me insane that even basketball players like petite women, which is like, come the F on, you're a giant. I think you can date a woman who doesn't have to justify being tall enough to go on the advanced rides at Disneyland. His smile widened as I ranted because apparently he liked me when I was a little angry. But that doesn't make me a dom, you know. Being tall? It doesn't, he said. But I think the difference is that subs don't discriminate against tall women. The implication and the irony that conversely I, as a tall woman had been discriminating against submissive men was not lost on me. Where does the line of preference versus discrimination lie on the dating spectrum anyway? So it's not exactly Jane Austen, but me and the last sub still talk regularly about politics and literature and sex. And all of my dating profiles are still active because it's probably true that everyone on a dating app is a little masochistic. <laughs>